Welcome to The Mountain Gardener with your host, Ken Lane. Gardening can be challenging, but with Ken's tips, tricks, and local advice, you'll reap huge rewards. Now welcome your host, Ken Lane. You have tuned into The Mountain Gardener. Your host, Ken Lane, here every week talking about the landscapes of northern Arizona. And what a week it's been. Gosh, lots of rain earlier. I don't know, but as an Arizonan through and through, kind of went to school, went to college, went off to do corporate world, came back, missed my little town in Prescott, Arizona. Um, I love the sunshine. I love dry. I like crusty I don't mind drought. I'm okay with that. I'm kind of tired of the rain. I kind of I don't want drought, but I wouldn't mind some more sunshiny days and some warmth. And the I, I kind of feel it when I can't see the sun. And this week has not been a sun week. It's been a, a cloudy, rainy, rainy week, which we need that. But um, enough. Let me have a break, and then in a week, hit hit the rain again. Some of you really took advantage of this moisture. Smart gardeners. So we saw at the garden center when it started to rain, even before the rain, you could see it coming on, on the Doppler. You could see the, the, the clouds on its way. Uh, folks, it was like a run on fertilizer. <laughs> they were coming in going, I'm going to take advantage of this rain. You should fertilize everything. Usually I say by Halloween, but some folks are going, I'm getting a jump on it. This is unusual. Actually, it's unusual for the mon- monsoons just to last this far. I mean, oh, it's almost October. We're still in this pattern. So usually it dries up by Labor Day or so, but it gets going. Let's take it. But eventually it'll dry out and you won't see this kind of moisture again. So folks are, are taking advantage of that moisture and getting that fertilizer in. And so I'm telling folks right now, customers I'm helping here, at least in Prescott. So we, we kind of cater to this is central highlands area. So, so Prescott, Prescott Valley, Chino, of course, but we go all the way down to Baghdad, Hillside, Kirkland, uh, uh, Skull Valley up north. We'll go as far south as, as, as Spring Valley, Cordis Junction. We love that 69 corridor and surprising number of folks from the Verde Sedona area come this way. I think they're going, I got to go. I can go to either Flagstaff or Prescott. Uh, Trader Joe's and Costco's that way. We'll come up and then, then we see them here. They're picking stuff up. So we're, we're helping here. I'm telling those, those folks, fertilize everything, every single thing, all of your flowers, all of your trees, all of your shrubs, the roses, the, the lawn, fertilize everything by October. And if anything is stressed or it's a brand new plant, brand new, let's say a landscape, it's only been in for, let's say, under 18 months in addition to the fertilizer, also put down at the same time, humic, H-U-M-I-C, humic, humic acid. They're both granular. You, you put them both in a, in a hand spreader. You walk around the yard and you just fertilize everything and then pray for rain or, or just wait for snow and rain. It's coming. It'll break down eventually. You just want it there. So when the plant does, as plants turn their fall color, we're starting to see that happen at, at the ridge lines. The maples are just have a hint of red. Another week, they'll be true red. So as they start to turn, they start to hibernate and they start to elongate root growth. They're storing up this energy in their roots. And so they're, they're bulking up. Uh, so it's, if you can fertilize them right then, you get this real benefit. And so if we have a real harsh winter, which is often here, um, they, they're, they're tougher, more robust. Uh, mainly, if we have a real dry winter, this is when it really plays out. We have uh, what, what we call winter burn or winter kill. The tips of plants will get burned back. And so if you fertilize them and you've put the humic on, they've got longer, tougher, thicker, fuller roots. So they survive all that. And so it just really makes for a chubby, kind of blubbery kind of plant. Not that, not that plants are blubbery, but they want to bulk up, help them to get through winter. They're going to hibernate here. Everything, even your evergreens. They're going to slow down. Yes, they're forming buds or buttons, those where that candle growth comes out. So your spruce and your pine and your firs, your junipers, they all kind of flush all at once in the spring. You take that food now and you'll get a larger button, a larger uh, tip growth on that through winter. So come next March and April, you get this much greater growth, much greater 
uh, uh, candle growth, really, the, the needled kind of plants, they grow really once and then you're done. So you get one shot at this. So if it's stressed at all, let's see, it's thin, wispy. Uh, it got some damage from, it got waterlogged. So plants got too much water this kind of monsoon season. season. Well, they haven't seen this in a while. So they went from bone dry to too much and it stressed them out. So they got, they thinned out, they turned yellow. If you see that, just give them the all purpose plant food. There's a seven, four, four food and humec at the same time. The other little tip I can give you, don't focus your fertilizer right at the base of plants. So at the trunk, there aren't any feeder roots at the trunk. Feeder roots are out towards the drip line. So those, that outermost branch, that wherever that outer branch of that shrub or that tree is, that's where the feeder roots, that's where the water and the food needs to be focused. The plant is searching out, looking as that plant grows its branches. It has roots that mirror that as they start looking for uh, moisture and food throughout the yard. If you know that's what plants are doing, just help them. Give it to them. Let them put the food out there. I see a lot of new folks, they focus too much where that drip emitter was from four years ago. And there's all that's there anymore is this great, big, thick, heavy barked anchoring root. And it can't even absorb any moisture, really. The feeder roots are out towards the drip line or that outer tip of that branch. So focus most of that food in the humic on, let's say, that outer tip kind of halfway back to the branch, kind of circle up. That, that's why it takes more food than you think it does for a big tree because you're doing that entire area. Yeah, but Ken, I've, I've got rock. I've got fabric and rock down. Can food go through all that? Yes, that's, why, that's what fabric does. So it prevents weeds from coming through it, but allows water and food to go through it. So don't worry about the fabrics, unless you've got plastic. The real old houses, so if you've got a house that's 20 years old, not that's real old, but, but they, they used to use 10 millimeter plastic, black plastic, thick, heavy, heavy grade plastic. That's not good. Food and water can't go through that. So there, you, you probably do need to pull that plastic back or poke holes in it, take a fork or something to poke holes through it. But if it's fabric, don't worry about it. That's why we switched everything from plastic over to the fabrics because it's so much healthier for the plant. In fact, we used to see, I've actually seen some older specimens, uh, the roots literally came out of the ground and they lived. All the roots were living between the plastic and the soil, like had an had a inch of, of crushed granite on top and then all the roots came up out of the ground because that's where the moisture of the food was at or the moisture underneath that plastic. Fabric, they don't do that. The roots stay deeper in the ground. Also, as you're digging around, we are seeing a lot of aphid uh, uh, problems. So there's this glossy, um, it lo looks like water kind of hit the foliage on, on the bottom part of your pine tree or aspens. Or apples. I've seen all kinds of examples this week. If you see that, that's not good. So it's been cool and moist. And we're going to stay cool and moist for another six, seven, eight weeks, depending on your elevation. Um, eight, this, this is like the perfect growing environment for aphids. They love to take over. They can go from a few to hundreds, if not thousands of aphids. And they're tree aphids. They're great big black aphids. They're about a quarter inch long. Great big black things. I guess I have seen orange. They can take on different colors, but mainly you see black. They kind of blend in. They look like bark. But if you look real close up towards the top of that tree, you'll see the bark kind of moving as the these aphids kind of crawl over each other. It's kind of gross, actually. Super easy to kill. I've, I've been I've been using Sayonara. This is a a bug killer, liquid bug killer that you put in a hose and sprayer and you under house, just regular house pressure, you can get that to the top of a tree and it obliterates them. Literally, it just, they're vaporized by the next day. Not an aphid, not one aphid is left. And that glossy material that gets on the grass, on the hood of your car, uh, on the rocks uh, is gone. So that's kind of, watch for those two things. So food, take advantage of the, the moisture and Watch for bugs. We've got a lot in store for you. We've got Lisa Waters Lane coming in with your garden questions, though, right after this. Be right back. You've been listening to The Mountain Gardener with Ken Lane, owner of Waters Garden Center in Prescott. Join him every week for timely garden advice right for the gardens. 
Visit Ken where he can be found throughout the week at Waters Garden Center in Prescott. Waters October Companion plants that grow well together are Blaze Maples, Burning Bush, Arizona Creeper, Glamour Kale, and Spicy Mum. Waters Spicy Mums are best sellers for super long bloom times and local garden tuck. Spicy Mums glow yellow with a halo of fiery orange around each daisy flower. These big bold perennials are perfectly shaped and add color in autumn when few flowers are in peak bloom. And just $9. You'll find bright fall flowers here at Waters Garden Center in Prescott. 300,000? Imagine a landscape needing 300,000 trees. Wow! But that's exactly how many trees Frederick Olmsted planted in New York's Central Park. That guy liked trees. Me too. A 2014 study found the more trees in a neighborhood, the lower the incidence of heart disease. Darwin, Einstein, and Beethoven hung out with trees to help them think. Trees are part of nature that helps us relax, daydream, and feel happier. Plant your own Central Park from Waters Garden Center in Prescott. You've been listening to Ken Lane, the Mountain Gardener. Green thumbs learned while working in the Family Garden Center. Now welcome back to the Mountain Gardener. Okay, we are back with Lisa Waters Lane in the studio. She comes each week with your garden questions. What are your neighbors talking about? And that's what this segment is for. Welcome, mm-hmm. Lisa. Thank you. Always good to be here. You're looking at my hat, aren't you? Go oh. Army. Go <laughs> Army. So wearing my hat in dedication to my son, okay. who's a uh, captain in the Army with the 1st mm-hmm. Cavalry Division in... Uh, where is that? Killian, Kill- Texas? Killian? Fort Hood? Killian? Killian, that's it. Fort Hood. Yeah. So anyway, we had a uh, um, a dedication on the courthouse square this uh-huh. this week, uh-huh. uh, rededicating the Veterans Memorial. That's on the, what side is that? North side of the courthouse. Uh, it's a, side, uh, it? where, wherever side it is. Oh, okay. So <laughs> like I'm trusting your directions. <laughs> you don't even know which way is southeast. That is not true. <laughs> not true at all. So anyway, she, we were uh, dedicating, uh, rededicating that to memorial. It's one with the um, Vietnam era soldier with a soldier in hand waiting for a helicopter to come down and save them. Oh. They had put a few more names onto the plaque mm-hmm. as we find additional names of, of veterans lost. That's all the names from Yavapai County that we as citizens who live here have Lost. They've 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 given their ultimate life mm-hmm. uh, for our freedom. Mm-hmm. Anyway, didn't mean to go down that path. Let's go into happier thoughts. We thank all of our veterans for their service. Yes. But garden questions. Mm-hmm. We are coming up on Veterans Day, so hey, November. Yeah. Okay. November, November eleven. I'm off by like yeah months. by southeast. <laughs> yeah. No, we will argue about that later. Okay, I know I'm right. <laughs> Cheyenne would like to know if she still has time to put in perennials in shrubs this time of year. And if so, how do you water newly planted shrubs in the fall? Super easy. So, yes, you can plant. It's a great time to plant. It's actually an ideal time to plant. So don't worry about that. As long as you're planting perennials, that is these plants that come back year after year, this is a great time. Especially the bigger things, trees, big shrubs like red tifotinias, eleagnus, cotoneasters, junipers, big screening plants like Arizona cypress. Mm -hmm. These are all great. They're they're actually preferred time to plant. So yes, you're you're approved to plant. Stay away from annuals. Like you don't want to plant a tomato outside right now. (laughs) A month from now, it'll be dead because we're getting frost. So those are annuals. Pansies would love it. They love winter. They don't like the summer. So you, t- you got to plant the right things mm-hmm. at the right time. Now going back to uh, how to water them. So water them just like you do in June. In fact, here's how you water, folks. So you're watering the same amount every time of the year. It doesn't matter what season. It could be January, June, August, February. It doesn't matter. You got to figure out how much water you need to run or, or add to that plant to saturate the entire root ball. So that's going to be the same every time. So for our drip systems, we're running about an hour and a half to two hours, depending on what it is and where it is. And that's how long you have to, to water trees and shrubs to get that water down throughout the root structure. So if you're watering every day for 10 minutes, that is a absolute blunder. Don't do that. You want to gather up all that water and water an hour and a half. 
mm-hmm. once per week for your trees and shrubs. Now we're not talking flowers with a with a root ball that's you know four inches in the ground. We're talking trees and shrubs. They got two feet of root ball. So once you figure that out, now all you're ever playing with is frequency. Mm-hmm. So how often should I run my system? So right now you're probably watering brand new plants. So it sounds like she's got some new plants out there or going to, you're watering about twice a week, Mm -hmm. every three, four days. Starting whenever we get our first hard freeze, that'll be in November sometime. Then you'll cut that back to twice a month. Just pick a nice day. Even in January, Mm -hmm. you're watering the same amount, hour and a half or two hours, whatever that system, however long it is, but now you're backing off to every 14 days. We'll go to every 10, 14 days. We'll look at the moisture and go, ah, Mm -hmm. we haven't seen rain or snow for two months. We better bump that up a little bit, go to every 10 days. If it's, if we've had some moisture, if we had some deep snows, you could probably back that off to once a month, but, Mm -hmm. but plants are using water through the winter. If you do that, the plants will actually continue to root Mm -hmm. until the end of the year. So they'll take a little break in January and sometime in February, they'll start to take off again. So it's just they get a little break, they're resting, and they just start growing again. And by March 1, you're seeing daffodils in bloom, forsythias are blooming, I mean, the camellias, the, the azaleas, all that early spring stuff, mm-hmm. they're in bloom. So that's kind of, did I answer all those I think questions? so. There we go. <laughs> More than we wanted. More <laughs> than just, just planting this watering. Okay. Next question is from Stephen. He was at the store at the garden center and saw yeah. some blue ice Arizona cypress. Okay. Wants to know what's the difference between the blue ice and the native, sure. and is it still as hardy as the native? Oh, Arizona cypress, the name says it all. It's Arizona. It's made. It's one of us. It's made for here. It's fine. What happened is we're breeders. We're developing. We're, we're, you can breed plants like you breed puppy dogs. You can come up with labradoodles and uh, <laughs> you know, cockerdoodles and all kinds of doodles. Uh, we do it with plants. Mm-hmm. And so you're, you're cross-pollinating or grafting or what you do to come up with new plants. And so Arizona cypress is a giant. It gets huge, 25, 30 feet if you let them go by 25. The Arizona, the ice variety is bluer. So we've got a better color, more Mm -hmm. consistent silver color, and it's shorter. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Now any yard can have an Arizona cypress, whereas normally only the big yards could have Arizona cypress. So great for screening plants. So the the blue ice gets below 20 feet. So it's it's a good 10 feet shorter than than its original cousin, but they are related and they're just as hardy. Mm -hmm. So don't worry about one's better than the other. They don't put on a, a berry like a juniper does. So and they don't have the allergy things that junipers have. Uh, they put on a little tiny cone about mm-hmm. the size, kind of smaller than a, than a golf ball. Kind of cute. Uh, but it just has an icy blue evergreen plant. It's a great plant for here. Mm-hmm. If you want to screen off a neighbor or you just want to block the wind or highlight a, a, a vista, mm-hmm. look at the blue ice. Uh, Arizona cypress. It's a great look at any Arizona uh, cypress. It's a good voice. We did get some, uh, I think they call it chaparral, Arizona cypress. Neat. And that one is like a sagey green color. Really pretty. And and I could see it in front of maybe some pines or something dark green and then putting the chaparral in front. Yeah. Be really pretty contrast. So yeah. Check those out. So many times we get so you can get too much Arizona color, which is this blue. Kind of blue, blue muted. You don't have a lot of greens. I mean, even the the yeah. junipers are kind of have a, a green blue hue. Yeah. Uh, pinion pines blue blue hue. Ponderosas are truly green, but all the green is way, way up there. <laughs> so it doesn't help you with the design phase. So yeah. it's good to have some of those contrasting colors. The greens mm-hmm. and the 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 sagey colors right. really bring out the style of your yard. Mm-hmm. I agree. All right, next question. John has a large prickly pear patch in his yard, okay. which now is kind of, he's having some yellow out yep. and almost turn black. And then those paddles fall off. Yeah. Wants to know what to do. So prickly pears love two years of drought, <laughs> solid drought, never moisture, never rain, nothing but sunshine and, and heat. Uh, and so all of a sudden we've gone from that to almost record amounts of water and your prickly pears, they're not happy. So they're getting overwatered is what's happening. So they were fine. They were creeping ac- along the, the ground, the gardens. Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden, probably in some real shallow soil, 
that's where they love. That's where they grow. That's what they're famous for. Mm -hmm. And now all of a sudden they're, they're sitting in water. So what to do, pull, pull out, the, once they turn black or yellow, there's no yeah. saving them. Just right. pick, pick that pad off, throw it away. Or don't even add it to the compost pile because the needle will be there later <laughs> and you'll be using it and you'll get these needles in your gloves. Just yeah. throw it away. Yeah. Uh, or let your friend, let your enemy's compost pile, add it to their compost pile. Uh, but for you, just clean it up. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to dry out here very shortly, and it will be bone dry, and those plants will recover, right. and they'll start to root for cacti. We don't really fertilize cacti very much, but I would give them some humic, humic acid. It's a granular product we have here at the garden center, and I would sprinkle some of that on there and encourages root growth, helps the plant recover. And that's what I would do for that one. Three questions this week. All right. So Ken and Lisa Lane, the Mountain Gardeners, we'll be right back to this. You're listening to Ken Lane, a.k.a. the Mountain Gardener. Ken can be found throughout the week in Prescott at Waters Garden Center. Listen each week as he answers timely garden questions unique to mountain gardens. I used to be cocky and actually dared to beat the big boxes at their own game. Since the beginning, we were known for the very best plants in town. But with youthful ambition, we added a line of inferior plants, contractor grade, that matched the box stores and beat their prices. We failed miserably. The plants were side by side. Waters hand-picked quality at the higher price and the inferior plants at the lower price with astounding results. The inferior plants, not bad quality, just not full and nice, were still there a month later. The hand-picked quality plants, they had been restocked twice and the bench was empty again. The youthful cockiness, it's tempered and with age comes wisdom and knowing who you really are. Waters Garden Center doesn't compete with the marts and the boxes. We simply grow the very best plants our family is famous for. We will never offer inferior plants. Cross my heart. Pinky swear. Waters Garden Center. 1815 Iron Springs Road here in Prescott. You've been listening to The Mountain Gardener with local expert Ken Lane. Join the conversation every week as he answers timely garden questions. Email Ken a question directly from your phone to his desktop through the web at watersgardencenter.com. That's waters with two T's, gardencenter.com. Now welcome back your host, Ken Lane. I was teaching a garden class last weekend. You know, every Saturday we have a free garden class. And so I was teaching the class last week and I was showing privacy screens. Here's how you, here's how you use plants to basically block people out, to have more privacy, more int intimacy. And so we we're going over examples and I was stunned. It turned into a garden design class. And so I was showing people don't, don't put, uh, don't put plants all in a row like they're like a formal garden. Zigzag them. Go with triangular patterns and, and make it look more natural. It fills in faster, but mainly it looks better. And then how to put plants in front of them to make it feel like a garden. So it's a secret garden, not a wall. So a wall, whether it's cinder block or, or chain link or razor wire, it, it's a, still a wall. You really, you want it to feel like this, a better feeling of, of having plants layered together, like like nature just built this garden up around your house and just who who wouldn't want to live here? Hey, come on in, have a glass of tea with me. Uh, well, let's watch a sunset together. Let's look at the hummingbirds. It turned into that. I was surprised. And that's that's things where, I mean, all day long, what we do here at the Garden Center here in Prescott is we help people design. So our place, our niche in the marketplace is we have incredible quality. The quality is the, over the top. And you've heard these issues of COVID and supply chains and disruptions. That's true. It's actually difficult to find great quality. It's easy to find junipers. It's easy to find a lilac. It's easy to find, but it's hard to find great looking. You can get the leftover stuff that no one bought pre-COVID, so it was still sitting there. They've tried to sh shave it back, but there aren't any more. Uh, but but quality is actually harder and harder and harder to find. Uh, we we had that storm in Texas, that that cold spell uh, last what was that January or so that killed off a lot of plants. Entire farms were obliterated. The big stuff. I had some 
you know, 50, 60, 70 year old Joshua trees, big yuccas in tree form, bigger than I am. These, these are instantaneous specimen plants, huge 24 inch box, red tip photinias, like instantaneous. All, I lost them all. They're all gone. They all died last January, February, and there's no getting them back. And so we were all competing for the West Coast material now. So all that Midwest, we normally pull from Washington, Oregon, California, Utah, Colorado, West Texas. That's that's We have farms all over there. We've got friends that grow things for us. And all of a sudden, what we used to have, our own, our, our truck would be the only one that would be there that day to fill up. Uh, plants we had like people from all over so the crop rotation was 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 had great pressure on it and so a lot of the good quality stuff got got vaporized so this is where you really had to call in favors so and hey john we've been doing business with you for 30 years our dads knew each other you you gotta give me i need more than that you who screw being fair you know, we want to be I'm more valuable. Why would you take a hundred of these and give 10 to every customer? I want 50 of them. Give them to me. And and you've been able to do that as long as you had these strong relationships. So we've had this quality and then we've had the right mix. And so it's hard to actually to find. I was just talking to a neighbor, a good friend of mine. He's got Leland Cypress. They're 20 years old. He's having to cut them down. It is Truly, truly sad. These are instantaneous. I mean, they're, they're 20 foot by 12 foot solid green wall. And it's a beautiful house. And just this private, you just walked, you drove down the driveway. It's just private. Now it's all open and you see everything. It's not so good. And so, but Leland Cypress, we haven't sold those here in over five years. It's a blight taking them all out. They're all going to be, they're all going to die in the county eventually, but you can still find that for sale here at a box store. They have them. They don't, they don't, they just want to sale through the till. They don't care whether it's right or wrong. They just want cash in the, in the register. And so they're still selling those. I'm offended when I see that, but what am I going to, all I can do is help my customers. So we have the right material and over the top quality, and we're trying to go with larger sizes. So we hear a lot of times here, you know, I, I retired here and, and I don't, I don't want to wait. I got the money and I don't want to wait. I want it. I want a full size tree now. I want privacy now. And so you see this niche happening. And so that's, that's some of that supply chain stuff is happening. It's actually, and it looks like it's going to get worse before it gets better. It's taken us, uh, what I had ordered. I'd ordered pottery from Vietnam back. What was that back in April or May? I'm going to get it next week. What is that? That's like ridiculous. That's crazy. But it was stuck off Newport Beach. It was stuck there forever. And they finally got it all together. In fact, we're we're tripling order because we know they're not going to fill 30, 40% of our orders. We're just way over booking, anticipating they're they're going to short us so we can still have enough to get here. We're, we've got pottery. We're very unique, very specialized. We have resort size pots. These are big. These are things you'd find at big homes, big no one, no one sells big pots. You can find cheesy plastic and terracotta, things that don't winter over, but it's hard to find a good quality, larger pot that's pretty. And so you got to have relationships with that. So we've got these strong relationships that will fly up to their fact. We hand pick the, the pots that we want for our style here in Prescott. So this, this, this supply chain thing, it's not over. I think it's, it's going to get worse before it gets better through next year or is, is what they're saying. I don't know. Got a lot, of, lot more in store for you. Don't go anywhere. Didn't mean to go down that path. But Lisa's coming in with her garden segment with some good quality garden advice after this. The Mountain Gardener, your source for timely garden advice right for higher elevations guaranteed to make a difference in your yard this season. Gardens help awake our creative spirit and connect us to aspirations, family, and dreams. Dreams of a better life, a better home, and better health. Sometimes the best way we connect with ourselves is to temporarily disconnect from our electronics. Gardens become a quiet refuge. Plant a new flower bed, pick some fresh herbs from the garden, and they lend themselves to ways of beautiful color that naturally evolve through our four seasons. A beautiful garden speaks to its gardener with a power that eludes the electronic equivalent. Text and email messages are of this world, busy and disruptive and often filled with stresses. 
Gardens, however, are an attempt to transcend from the hectic life to one that becomes meaningful and cherished. Waters is a place of rest and peace for the creative soul. Be inspired and plant some of your own peace and rest with plants from Waters Garden Center, 1815 Iron Springs Road in Prescott. For people who love to be refreshed in the garden, they love to shop. You're listening to The Mountain Gardener with local expert, Ken Lane. Mountain gardening is very rewarding, with a few of Ken's tips, tricks, and garden shortcuts sure to turn your thumbs even greener. Now welcome back to The Mountain Gardener. Okay, we are back with Lisa Waters Lane. This, she has this entire segment just to herself, just what's, what's a garden idea she has share it with the audience and and hopefully we all get smarter because of it. Welcome back to the studio, Lisa. Thank you. Yeah. So uh, um, we should mention to folks, they're going to be at our house next Friday for a garden tour. And so (laughs) we we were generally, we host a, a Ponderosa, we call it our Ponderosa circle. It's our insider club. What's going on. And we share with them how waters garden center did, what we see with the industry, what they'll see next spring. Would you kind of share the intimate, what, what small business owners never share, except for with your most intimate neighbors and friends. Um, and so we share that. Well, with COVID kind of flaring up again, you can't get people together and you can't serve food and drink. Or oh, I, I'm nervous doing that. It's just not wise. And so we thought, what can we do? And so we thought, hey, we've never had anyone at our gardens. We've never shown them off. We talk about them. We show pictures, just a still of a, of a plant or something, but we never show the whole thing. Next Friday at 4 o'clock, we're going to have a virtual garden tour of our gardens, our personal gardens at home from 4 to 4.45, something like that, about an hour or less. Uh, we're, we're trying to figure out what that looks like and how to technically pull it off. Virtual technology is uh, it's tricky. It's not helpful. It's not easy. It's not like plug and play. That's a myth. It's a plug and diagnose until your, your hair drops out. That's what, but anyway, we're going to show off the front yards, the backyards, uh, just, just what our thought process, what, how we enjoy those parts of the gardens, how Mm -hmm. we incorporate art, water, uh, fountains into our gardens and how we enjoy those, how we entertain with those. So you're welcome to join us. Please uh, be a part of that. We're sending that out through emails or Facebook. Um, probably on the front of our website. We'll have to make sure our website's got that on it <laughs> before this, uh, so people know where There's to go. A lot to do it's RSVP. <laughs> you got to have the link. I think we're going to use our YouTube channel uh-huh. as a media to to stream through, hmm. uh, just because not everyone has a Facebook account, but everyone has a, a YouTube. Do they access? Yeah. Well, if you're breathing and you've got a smart TV or anything, you got YouTube. <laughs> So what our I thought is, to, okay. it's technology. <laughs> Who knows what people have? It'll be interesting. So we'll, we'll record that and, and show it off. So a little nervous. I don't think we're ready. We need to touch our gardens before next Friday. I know. <laughs> They're pretty I mean, nice. They look pretty nice, yeah. but there's a few things yeah. that need a little, Just, little have, TLC. You have a uh, guest over to your house. You kind of want them to look right. over the top. Mm-hmm. So next true. Friday, okay. October 8th at 4 to 445 is what we're saying. Uh-huh. And and the state of the industry. We'll share what we saw this year, mm-hmm. where we see the shipping supplies, mm-hmm. uh, what the crop rotations, new plant int- introductions, all that will be coming up. And when you'll see some, of, when do the roses next year show up? What's the newest, latest red buds? There's some exciting things happening next year. <laughs> okay. Sounds good. I'm waiting. Oh, good. <laughs> what do you got for you? Ben? What for do I have? Well, you know how... It's funny how things changes. I was I was intending to talk about fall fall plants, things that look good fall fall color, but then I walked to the house plant room oh. and we got two house plants in two shipments of house plants, and we got some really cool stuff. So house plants are are still really catching on. Yeah. People are starting to really appre- You know, we went through this time when everything was plastic. Yeah, everybody had <laughs> plastic plants, you know, because they want to take care of it, blah, blah, blah. But I love the fact that we're getting back into having uh, plants in our houses because they do so much to have them in your home. So as I was walking through some of the cool ones that we got in, we got a black goldfish in which usually the goldfish plant is kind of a lighter green. Did you say blackened? What black, did you say? Black, black goldfish. Goldfish. Oh, I've never, really? So That's it's a weird kind thing. of a... Huh. a 
darker, very dark green leaf to it. But the thing I love about it is when it blooms, it has these orange, they look like the goldfish crackers. Yeah, right. Uh, so just a really bright contrast there when they're blooming, just super green kind of small glossy leaf so it always looks really really healthy because it's got that glossy leaf to it so that's a new one that's cool that we got in we also got some more swiss cheese philodendron that's, in, a, that's a rare plant which it's rare but it's been it's one of those plants that was like maybe in the 70s or very yeah. popular and then it kind of went out and now it's back in but it's just a real cool plant a very easy to grow plant oh, yeah. Uh, looks neat because it has the textures of the holes in the leaves, yeah, which like are a, supposed to be there. Looks prehistoric almost. Yeah. It's rare because you can't get any. You just, they're so <laughs> hard to find. When we when we see a crop, we go, we'll take all of them, yeah. and you get you know ten maybe. <laughs> but just a, a really fun plant if you're kind of new into growing house plants. That would be a great one for you to start with. Um, we got a red Luna peperomia, which anything in that peperomia family is crazy drought hardy i would say they don't want a lot of water for those of us like me that only think maybe once or twice a week a month about watering these are great plants to have and along with its cousin we have the chinese i have plant samples so this is the chinese money money plant which there again is in the peperomia family and an, this is another one that's become very very popular Really cool plant, neat leaves. <laughs> Can you get it? Showing it off on the camera. Oh, okay. Just trying. To, this is a pot. This is a vlog radio show. <laughs> we're trying to branch out and have yeah. be trendy so online. We're trying. So the podcast is actually gaining speed. Yeah. So Chinese money plant. Yeah, if you've been looking for one of those, we've got some nice ones, and definitely we also have the money tree, which is different from the money plant, but also really cool because they're usually the trunks are braided on them, which actually takes a lot of work to really braid those trunks. Um, but another tree that's uh, a little harder to find, but a really cool tree to have that doesn't take a lot of water and actually takes a pretty cool spot in the house. So if you have a house that tends, especially in the wintertime, runs a little cooler, it'd be fine for that. Hypoestes, which is another one of my favorites. Um, I love the color in the Hypoestes. So this one's kind of the red, dark pink. They call it splash red. There's also one that's a much lighter color than this, a very light pink. Um, there's some that are pink and white mixed together. And then there's some that are also white. Uh, likes a bright room. And if you're a person that maybe you're a little heavy handed with that water sometimes, this would be a good plant for you because it doesn't mind staying a little bit on the moist side. But look at that color. You know, mix that in with your other green plants. It's spectacular to have that color on there. Uh, we also got some prayer plants, otherwise known as Maranthas. Uh, and those are really cool because the little leaves fold up at night. Oh, I didn't open. know that. Yeah, huh. Because we're only open during the day. <laughs> huh. You never see it pray. You never see it praying. <laughs> but a really cool plant to have. It's kind of a variegated white and green color to it. And then this is probably my favorite. I wish I could do better with these, but this is an anthurium. So this one is the red and white variegated anthurium. Also comes in that really dark red uh, and then also a pink color. So really attractive foliage on there. Nice bright green foliage really contrasts nicely with the flower. This one likes a little bit more high humidity. It's actually the Hawaiian state flower, I believe. Uh, so it does like a little more humidity. So maybe you're mixing it in with a grouping of plants. Um, you could also put some gravel in the saucer and keep, keep moisture in that saucer. And then as it evaporates, it sends more humidity up. You're making a so, mess in my studio, my office. <laughs> Got dirt everywhere now. But I love it. It shows off plants. well on camera. So it's perfect. They're beautiful. Well, it is really pretty. And those Lots lead, that color... You know, that the colored leaves, they, the blooms stick around forever. You know, you're talking six, eight weeks, months. So it's a good one to bring color into the home yeah, with. Pretty much continually um, mm -hmm. in bloom. So Lisa, we're out of time we're just of like time. that. So I know your list keeps going. You have to see all the new houseplants that are in. Some <laughs> of them rare, some of them big specimens, yeah. huge po uh, uh, po pothos, mm -hmm. uh, string of pearls that are beautiful. unbelievable. Beautiful. So Ken and Lisa Lane, the Mountain Gardeners. 
be right back. Look for more tips, tricks, and garden shortcuts through Ken's website. Podcast the show, read his weekly garden column, or follow him on Facebook and Instagram at watersgardencenter.com. That's waters with two T's, gardencenter.com. Waters October companion plants that grow well together are burning bush, spicy mums, glamour kale, and red fox sedge. Fox sedge has striking clumps of red foliage that fades to flocks, giving off a warm glow. An attractive foliage effect in container gardens, perennial beds, and fountain accents. A good choice in poor draining pockets along dry stream beds and beside large landscape boulders. You'll find foxy red grasses, just $17, here at Waters Garden Center. Google, give me directions to Waters Garden Center. Waters October companion plants that grow well together are Burning Bush, Arizona Creeper, Spicy Mums, Glamour Kale, and Prescott Blaze Maple. Prescott Blaze Maples have extreme growth of three feet or more each year. The fall color glows like embers in a blaze hot fire. Thus the name. There's no better red maple to plant locally. Perfect for patios or any place shade is needed. And a big bold tree is just $149. You'll find the best fall shade trees here at Waters Garden Center in Prescott. Welcome to the Mountain Gardener with Ken Lane. Gardening in the mountains is different. Listen to Ken's tips, tricks, and garden shortcuts guaranteed to make your gardens more beautiful than ever this year. Now for better advice that works locally, welcome your host, Ken Lane. So I have a list, a to-do list that I go through in my own personal gardens that help me grow better plants. I, I thought I'd go down the list. It's maybe it's 11 things. And I've covered a couple, you know, fertilize, watch things like that. But, but one, as I start to pull plants out, like, like your uh, squash, pumpkins, they had a hard time this year. Lots of mildew and just disease. It was so wet and humid. They like bright, dry gardens. Uh, but, but it was perfect for tomatoes and peppers. They did great. They like, they like this kind of weather. So you're seeing this as you pull things out and you're getting your flower and vegetable and herb beds, really think about top layering, put in a two to three inch layer of barnyard manure on top of that to enrich the soil. We really don't have good nutrients in our soil here. So you need to replenish that. And even if you're not going to plant until next April, yeah, so giving it three, four, five months to rest, to just be there and, and feed the worms and get those mycorrhizal colonies before you rototill it, you get the manure on there. A good, strong, a good three-inch layer is great. And even if you're not going to turn the soil for a while, just get it on there. It's really going to help you. keeps the soil from heaving, and it helps encourage the nutrients, and it helps draw in more of the beneficial bugs that live in the soil. That's one thing I do. Uh, seed heads, if you're going to collect, let's say, yarrows, uh, you, your wildflower seeds, you're going to sow more radishes or carrots, whatever. Uh, they're so easy to do by seed, and you don't have to go buy seed every year if you just time it. And now is your time when you're harvesting many of those seed heads. And you don't have to actually just take the seed. You can just clip off the, the flower and let it dry, and you'll have it for next year. Or if you've got wildflowers, you can just kind of like soon as they dry here by the end of this month, middle of November, they'll get this, this straw color. As soon as they start fading, you can take just a weed whacker and just whack them. Watch seed go flying everywhere. Uh, they'll just spread for you throughout the, the meadow or throughout the gardens. So now's the time to take advantage and think through uh, the, your seed for next year. Second, uh, you might be surprised, but this, this mountain area of Arizona, especially the Verde Valley, uh, the, the, the Oak Creeks, those folks, birds are following the water source. So we are actually on a very strong migratory path from north to south. And it is stunning how many different kinds of birds you will find that float through the gardens. So some of the birds are already starting to head south, but you'll see some of the northern birds, they'll stop in at your feeders and keep those feeders Clean, dry, fed, keep them out there. Uh, don't put that hummingbird feeder away yet. You'll see more different kind, different hummingbirds coming to visit you that aren't local residents. They don't camp out. They've, they've already gone down to Phoenix or Mexico or wherever they're going, but other birds will stop by. So keep it going. It's a good time to do that. If you're going to make that last bit of pesto, 
by Halloween, Halloween's the, the, the first frost date is what local gardeners use. Now, I know this is broadcast all over northern Arizona. So the, the, the lower valley folks, uh, let's say, say uh, you're in Sedona up against a, a west-facing wall where it really radiates some heat. Maybe you're the middle of November before you see your first frost. But you're definitely going to see frost. What's striking is right there in the Verde River, all that cold air kind of spills on top of you. So you almost see it the same, same frost date that we do, let's say, here in Prescott. So we saw that in Skull Valley. The cold air would just settle down on top of those ranches and those farms down there. It was Saint. It was 4,000 foot instead of five, but it had the same frost date. Uh, some of you folks in the higher elevation, Williams, Flagstaff, White Mountains, there you might be the middle of October. But generally, throughout northern Arizona, we say Halloween. That's your be ready, have things ready. And so if you're going to harvest that last bit of basil, cilantro, uh, some of these herbal things. You want to do that before that frost. So keep an eye from this point forward, keep an eye on the weather and be ready to pick, to harvest those that last vegetables, to dry your last, your last let's say, er, lavenders, that kind of stuff. So pick those last tomatoes because you know they're not going to go through a frost very well. So just watch that. If you've got cold frames or greenhouses, Now's the time to clean those out. So they've been resting because they got too hot, but you're going to be powering those up in the next month. You got time. Don't start moving stuff in yet. There's still plenty of beautiful autumn. We have some of the longest autumns anywhere in the country, right here in the mountains of Arizona. It's just long, drawn out, beautiful, the best season of all. But be ready. Just be ready. So hose down that that cold frame, the, the, if, if it's not heated, just just kind of get a get some bleach water, get all the disease stuff that might get the weeds out of there, get it cleaned up so it's ready. And what I'll do with mine is I'll take one part bleach to ten parts water, and I just go through and I, I that seems to get rid of all the leaf spot, leaf disease, anthracnose, all kinds of stuff that sits around in the soil. It's waiting for you to bring more plants in to kind of feed off the next host that was in there. But start out clean. Just kind of clean the glass. Get, get it ready. Another one I put on my list is I've got ponds and waterfalls and, and fountains. We've got a fountain in the front, uh, big, big creeks in the back going into larger ponds. And so I'm getting ready for that colder climate. Now, I'm getting my skimmers, uh, filters, all kind of, I'll clean all that out. So it's been collecting debris, dust all season long. I want to clean that out before winter, before cold comes. It's going to ice over by, oh, December 1, some end of November, December, somewhere in there. Uh, the grandkids can start walking across the, the pond in January and February. That's fun to see them if they're brave enough to walk. I wonder if the ice is thick enough, but I get things ready. And so I'm, if you've got... Um, uh, skimmers and, and, and filters, clean them out, uh, get prep them. Uh, I'll get, I'm cleaning off my water heater. It's not in the pond yet, but by, you know, the end of November, by Thanksgiving or so, I'll kind of flow. I've got a floating pond heater. It just keeps the ice from breaking from, from freezing. And I put it by the skimmer. So it kind of keeps that whole area where the pump is, keeps it all open. I'm just ready. So I'm just, just be ready, be aware so you don't have to do all this right now. Just you got a month, month and a half. Check, take the list. Just kind of check it off slowly as you get a chance. Uh, I'll do the same thing. Keep watering your your trees and shrubs. Don't turn them off. Your gardener's going to want to come in the end of October, first part of November, and turn off all the irrigation. If you've got a whole lot of, of new plants, you'll need to water those by hand or activate that water system manually sometimes. So just be aware that plants will not go all winter without water. You'll want to water them a couple times a month. So you're watering regularly through October. And then in November, we start to throttle back. Things are now starting to be deciduous. They're, they're naked. They've lost their leaves, but they still need to be watered. They still at least twice a month water things. If you need to water them by hand. So that's, I see too many mistakes with that. You could start as soon as you start to see your perennials fade, you can cut them back all the way from, from iris to grasses, to echinaceas, to, to I mean, all your perennials. You can cut back at your convenience. 
uh, when they start to fade. Go ahead and do that. So they'll start to turn color. Then they'll get this straw look. And then you can kind of go, yeah, I'm done. I, I, want, I feel like doing something. I'm going to take the weed whacker on those whoop, and cut them or, or hedgers. Or sometimes I take the lawnmower. I just mow them off. So you're free to cut back most perennials in the winter. These, these flowers that come back year after year. I think it's time to clean sand and oil your tools. You know, if they've been out in the rain, they're, you're not going to do that much more. You're probably putting in mums. You're planting pansies, containers, small garden projects, those great big things. Yeah, next spring, you're going to turn the, the vegetable garden again. So it's time to kind of take care of the mowers and the tools that you have. Feed everything in the yard. Feed everything in the yard. Feed everything in the yard. I can't say it enough. Uh, and then, then also it's time to take a look. This is your month to take a look at your well. The folks are, that are on wells, make sure your well house is buttoned up. You got the heat tape back on. You got your heat lamp. However you keep things from freezing, power that thing back up. So I haven't done mine yet. The windows are still open in, in, the, in the well shed, uh, but I'm ready by the end of the month. I'll have it. I'll have the tape, heat tape back up, the heat lamp back on, and they're on thermostatically controlled. But I'll be ready so when it does finally turn, I don't have to run worrying about will the will the well freeze. I have to worry about that. It's taken care of. That's kind of my go-to list in the mountains of Arizona. Be right back after this. You're listening to local garden expert Ken Lane, the owner of Waters Garden Center. He can be found throughout the week at Waters Garden Center, located in Prescott, 1815 Iron Springs Road. Thanks for tuning in to The Mountain Gardener. 300,000? Imagine a landscape needing 300,000 trees. Wow! But that's exactly how many trees Frederick Olmsted planted in New York's Central Park. That guy liked trees. Me too. A 2014 study found the more trees in a neighborhood, the lower the incidence of heart disease. Darwin, Einstein, and Beethoven hung out with trees to help them think. Trees are part of nature that helps us relax, daydream, and feel happier. Plant your own Central Park from Waters Garden Center in Prescott. Hi, Lisa with the Plants of the Week and our instant Raywood Ash. Raywoods are known for their handsome fall foliage that turns colors of red to royal purple. Just stunning. The leaves have a fine texture which add a softness to harsh rock yard. At $120, these instant trees are magnificent. 12 feet tall with a 6 foot spread. You won't have to wait for this tree to grow up. Waters Garden Center, 1815 Iron Springs Road in Prescott. Where people who love instant trees, they love to shop. You've tuned in to The Mountain Gardener with local garden expert, Ken Lane. Join him each week as he answers timely garden questions that are sure to make a difference in your gardens. Now welcome your host, Ken Lane. I get to thinking, I just gave you this big old list. It's like a continual dialogue going through. If you want a, a copy or a printout of that entire list that I do, that I just read off, uh, it's going to be posted to my blog site. So if you go to watersgardencenter.com, look at the top, it says blog. Just hit that and it'll be the first column. Very, very, very first thing, fall to-do list. So if, you, if you're a, if you like taking numbers and, and checking off things, uh, take, take a look at that. It's there for you. We'll get you a copy here at the Garden Center. If you stop by, we'll print one off for you. But it's we make it easy for you. I, it might even still be in our Facebook feed if you're a Facebooker. Instagram doesn't handle that kind of stuff very well, but but if you're looking for it, you can ch- type in fall garden to-do list, Waters Garden Center. I'm sure Google will, will analyze that SEO and come, it'll be right up in front of your face. It's right there. Just make sure that list is for here, the mountains of Arizona. That's not a Phoenix list. That's not a Tucson or Palm Springs or Southern California. That's a a a Western Rocky Mountains list. Maybe it would work for Denver and those areas, but really it's for this area. Northern area is for us. So that, that's what that list is for. Uh, t- take advantage of it. And you've got plenty of time. I'm not trying to put pressure on you. Just slowly over the next month, you should just knock that out. Frost is going to come. You're starting to see some fall color show up. The grasses, here's your real test. You know it's autumn. When the grasses, which is coral forester grass, bunny grass, fountain grass, misacanthus, deer grass, bear grass, pampas grass, they are over the top. Oh my gosh, they are in all their glory. This is when they shine. 
Now, autumn. This is kind of, we got, a again, a long autumn. It will be in Prescott, Arizona. Typically, we go well into November before it really starts to get cold. We'll get maybe get a frost. But that first heavy, like, deep freeze doesn't happen till the middle of November. So, and, and again, I know that's elevation related. It's also, more importantly, are you east, north, south, east, west facing on your hilltop? Uh, how's your house sitting? That has more to do to your gardens because the sun is so warm at this elevation when it's so dry. It just warms things up. And so it might frost and it gets really warm, just warms up just like that. If you're on the north side and you're up in Walker and you're overlooking that north slope, it's colder. Just depends where you're at. So kind of look at that. Got to give a shout out to our sponsors. This week, it's Signals AZ. They're a digital newspaper out in Prescott Valley. What I love about Signals, this is the, the Fane group, you know, the Fane family, or old ranch family. Uh, not, not that the Fanes are old, but, but they've been around a long time. So they've been here longer than the Waters clan has been here. We're second generation with third generation owners coming into the garden center. I think their great grandfather was ranching here back in the 1800s. So they got it. They got us beat long before, but I like the family. Our families go way back. I respect what they're doing in the county, how they give back, but mainly they put together this signalsaz.com digital newspaper, and they do nothing but publish positive content. I love that. No police reports, no political, just positive news. And it's not just Prescott Valley or the Fane Group. It's the entire, this part of the state, positive, happy news, uh, just as informative. And they publish our garden content. And so, and they do it really for free. They just want to get great content out to the community. And so they publish our, our podcast every week. Our newsletter, our, our, our garden column every week with high definition photos, they, and they do it out of the kindness for the community. And so, Signals AZ, love the family, love what they are doing out in Prescott Valley and, and, and the region. And you just thank you for, for making us. It's just one family helping another. We just happen to know each other. Uh, and, and we're trying to make our communities better, which we all live in and enjoy. That's truly small business, and what what and we're all just small business owners trying to make the communities better. Thank you, Signals AZ, for sponsoring this show, and and our community. With that, throughout the week, Lisa and I camp out here at Waters Garden Center, and we love talking to fans of the show. Some stores are meant to dash into, hunt down your purchase, and leave promptly. It's part of our twenty four seven cyber world where it's difficult to decompress, slow down, and enjoy the environment. We miss the tactile experiences, fragrance, and enjoyment that come from slowing down and admiring the majesty of something as simple as a butterfly. Waters has elevated lingering to an art form with experiential pauses built into the very DNA of the garden center. We're designed purposefully for leisurely strolls through the many greenhouses that beckon guests to enjoy the plants. We work tirelessly to craft an environment that aesthetically reflects the cycle of the seasons. When you finally have a plant question, one of Water's plant ambassadors are here to help you choose plants that will thrive in your landscape. Decompress and learn how to linger in the garden once again. Here at Water's Garden Center, 1815 Iron Springs Road in Prescott. For people who love to slow down in the garden, they love to shop. If you want a more fruitful garden, increase success in your landscape that just feels better, then tune in every week to The Mountain Gardener. Years of tips, tricks, and garden shortcuts are guaranteed to make your gardens nicer than ever. Listen to this podcast or read Ken's weekly garden column by visiting watersgardencenter.com. That's waters with two T's, gardencenter.com. Thanks for tuning in.